Welcome to this Weatherford Lifting Operation Safety Training video. In this section of the video, we'll cover the safety precautions you should employ when loading and offloading trucks. When an unloading operation is being performed with either a forklift or a crane, there are several factors to consider. Always ensure the driver is out of his vehicle and moved a safe distance away from the load operation. Consider the load itself and what precautions may be necessary. Take into consideration the size of the load. Is it small or large, wide or narrow? Is it even in its composition or is it bulky? What about the nature of the product? Is it solid or liquid? Does it contain hazardous materials? Consider the weight of the load versus the capacity of the forklift. Check for an uneven load distribution and locate the center of gravity. Is the load secure? Is there a possibility of the load becoming displaced? Does the load obscure the visibility of the forklift operator? Of course, there are safety factors to consider beyond the load itself. Load and unload only in designated areas and use caution on uneven ground surfaces. Always place the load in the lowest, safest position and ensure it remains there. Be aware of other moving vehicles. A clear path is needed to ensure safety. When using a crane, Position it correctly to avoid making contact while slewing around. Ensure the load is stacked on a level surface or is supported with wooden timbers. This will allow for the easy withdrawal of slings or forks. The proper use of a sling is vital to a safe lift. Remember these pointers. Check the safe working load of all gear before the lift operation, along with any reductions to the safe working load. Never trap slings and drag them out from beneath a load. Likewise, never land a load on its slings. Make sure the lifting tackle fits properly. That includes making sure that the sling and the hook are compatible with each other. Never attach a crane hook to a load. You may know this is live hooking. Don't live hook. It's unsafe. Don't attach two loads to one hook. The rule of thumb is one lift, one load. Make sure to center the hook directly over the load center before lifting. Use packing when necessary to protect the sling. And don't batten slings down. Let them lay at their natural angle. When working at height, remember these safety considerations. Use correct lanyards, either restraint or fall arresters. If working no higher than six feet from the ground, use a ladder with assistance provided by other coworkers. Every time you use a ladder, you should do a pre-use check beforehand to make sure that it is safe for use. A pre-use check should be carried out by the user, both at the beginning of the working day and after something has changed. Also, remember to use only secured and approved anchor points and inspect the PPE being used. Use caution when operating mobile elevated working platforms. Remember, it is not permitted to disembark from an elevated platform. Harnesses need to be inspected before and after each use. That inspection should cover all metal connectors and buckles, back braces, adjusters, D-rings, fasteners, and web tides, both the pass-through type and the quick connect type. Inspections should also cover restraint webbing, carabiners and screw link connectors, and shock absorbers. Remember, keep your equipment safe and it will do the same for you. There are a few basic safety factors to consider when handling BOP. Ensure only vertical straight lifts are applied. Never work under suspended loads. By the same token, never lift loads over people and do not ever use a hoist to lift people. When leaving a hoist unattended, land any attached loads. Remember, 
when you're at the controls of a hoist, you've got a lot of responsibility on your hands. Your coworkers are counting on you to use skill, good judgment, and common sense. BOP has lifting points. Use them at all times and stand at a safe distance from the load with the use of a tagline. Making up flange connections involves many of the same safety principles you would be providing to any load. Be sure to observe them. Be wary of other hazards associated with handling BOP. For example, slip and trips occur as the result of bad housekeeping, so keep house. BOPs are made up of separate sections, so use caution. Keep hands, fingers, and your body clear of moving parts to prevent injury and entrapment. And watch out for entanglement, electrocution, and high-pressure hoses. Be cognizant of limited workspace, the hazards of working from heights, and hazards related to the movement of loads. When the job is complete, place any hoists or hook locations in a place that will not interfere with the movement of people or materials, including other hooks. In this section of the video, we'll cover the proper handling of masts using cranes. The assembly and disassembly of masts contribute to many hazards in the workplace. Let's discuss those risks and how to mitigate them. Any lift operation using cranes should use caution, but that's doubly true for tandem lifts using two cranes. In such cases, an even higher standard of supervision and attention to detail is required. Be ensured that lifting supervisors and tool pushers are present to manage the movements of all loads. Crane lifts can be large and complex. Such lifts will include some or all of the following activities, all of which bear risk. The connection of slings and rigging equipment used to attach to the mast can cause structural damage if selection is incorrect. Also watch for the movement of personnel and other vehicles. During the loading and offloading of masts, consider wide load distribution and the length of load overhangs. Securing the load onto vehicles deserves special attention. The loads should be secured with tensioner straps, which should be strapped between a 45 and 60 degree angle to the front of the vehicle and overstrapped from side to side. This will reduce or prevent lateral and longitudinal movement of the load. The movement of these loads has to take into consideration site and road conditions, including overhead electrical power sources, awkward and difficult turns, the inability to reverse safely, bridges and height restrictions, villages, other traffic, and any other conditions that may potentially cause a hazard. Keep those considerations in mind and keep safe. In this section of the video, we'll cover the unique requirements associated with handling tubular pipe. While unloading casing, the crane, loader, or forklift must be operated by a competent and fully licensed operator, and a dedicated signalman or spotter must be used. In determining space requirements for casing, consider whether there is reduced or limited space that may cause the lift team to be unable to immediately lower the tubular pipe. When loading pipes onto a pipe rack, ensure that they are locked into position to prevent rolling. If there's a possibility that a load may become displaced, use attachments specialized for the purpose of handling such loads. Tubular pipes may be loaded or unloaded with a forklift or crane as needed. Tubular are delivered in many combinations, from single to bundle packs, or are loaded into pipe bins, so the lifting method changes. Depending on the job, tubulars may be uplifted and with the use of a pipe clamp attached to a forklift, or with the use of slings and choke hitch methods, or by attaching slings and shackles to attachment points on pipe bins. 
All vehicles transporting tubulars must have side stops fitted to the trailer. This precaution ensures that no casing or tubulars can roll or fall from the trailer. Most safety considerations that apply broadly to securing loads for transport also apply to securing tubular material. If necessary, see the training video provided earlier in this series to review those considerations.